So here uh, our objective is to find the coordinates uh, of the centroid of this T-shape area, which is basically the cross-section of a beam. Uh, so we want to locate the centroid with respect to the given axes that we have. Uh, one thing we notice is by inspection, um, since uh, this cross-section is symmetric with respect to y-axis, so the x-coordinate of uh, this cross-section, we call it x-bar, is going to be equal to zero. So in other words, the, um, the centroid has to be along the uh, y-axis, right on the y-axis, but we want to find the y-coordinate. So we know that in order to find centroid, and in this case the y-coordinate, that would be actually the ratio of what we call first moment of area, y i a i, divided by total area. And since we have basically two pieces, so if you take this beam uh, cross-section and break it into a flange, which is a 300 by 50 millimeters, so this is the flange of the beam, and the other piece is this rectangle, which we call it the web of the beam. So if we expand this, the first moment of area is just the distance times the area, y1 actually times a1 plus y2 times a2 so we can say this is um, this piece number one and the, the flange is number two so the web one and flange is two divided by total area which is the area of the flange and area of the web so actually let me um, show you how we do this now so let's go ahead and figure out why i so Y1 here is what? Is the location of the centroid of the, uh, the web relative to the reference. So that would be this distance. So that's your Y1. And that would be, as you could see, 300 uh, divided by 2 or 150. Uh, let me go back to black here. 150 uh, times the area. What well, The area of the web is 50 by... 300. Okay, plus, what is Y2? Y2 is the location of the centroid relative to the reference. So this is the Y2. And that would be, as you could see, 300 plus 25, that's 325. So a typical mistake, by the way, is that people just put uh, 25, but it's relative to the reference. So 325 times the area. Now the area of that uh, flange is also 50 by 300. And what do we have in the denominator? We have the total area, basically the area of the web, 50 by 300, plus the area of the flange, which is also 50 by 300. So if you do the calculation here, that comes out to be 237.5 millimeters. And that Y bar, actually, let me erase this. Uh, that Y bar then would be measured from our reference. So what we have here is that we have calculated that, that that's the location of the centroid. That's the Y bar, 237.5. So just one thing about this axis. So this is the location of the centroid right here. And so that's C. And uh, that's called the neutral axis, typically denoted by NA. And this axis is very important. Uh, later on, I'll show you how you can find the moment of inertia with respect to this uh, centroidal axis, the neutral axis. And that value, that property is used to calculate the maximum bending stress. So remember the cross section of this, this is just a cross section of the beam and there are loads acting in this direction along the beam. So if you draw the beam, right, like that, this is the cross section, right? And we have loads acting here. So then we can go ahead and calculate the um, bending stress or maximum bending stress. So actually that the location of that centroid is important because we can then calculate the moment of inertia and then eventually calculate the maximum bending stress as well as other uh, 
calculation uh, like calculating the uh, maximum transfer shear stress.